Physical strategy guides used to be the primary resource for people to find information about the games that they were playing. These guides were sometimes great with thorough and intelligent breakdowns of every section of the game. And some strategy guides were so garbage that attempting to play a game using only the information and strategies within them would be its own challenge. Which brings us to this video here today. Today we'll be playing through this game while following its official strategy guide as closely as possible, regardless of how good or bad its advice is. From the title of this video and the images on screen, you already know what game I will be playing. I'm not actually going to specify the name of the game so that I can just reuse this intro every time I do this. But with all that out of the way, let's get started. And if you do end up enjoying the video, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me out and will let you know when I upload more videos you might like. Need help with a boss or 100% completion? Get the official Arkham Origins guide from Brady Games. Well, since you bring it up, let's go. No, there is mention of the upgrades, but there's no specific uh, specification on like the order here yet. So we'll definitely see more of that in the guide though. Special combo tokens. Not used to those being referred to as tokens, but okay. Once your combo multiplier reaches times eight, you earn a special combo token, which is noted by your multiplier turning yellow. This means that you can perform a special combo move against a hostile to finish him off or destroy his weapon. So it specifies him and his, which means we can't use combo takedowns on Copperhead, Shiva, or her ninjas. The walkthrough is based on the normal difficulty of the game. So we will be playing on normal, as specified by the guy. Go through the gate at the end of the hall to enter cell block A. Feel free to make a lap around the cage ahead to spook some of the locked up criminals. Cell block A. <laughs> you guys don't seem that spooked. The first, like, cell did, but outside of that... Oh, no, you're spooked. Now listen, I know I'm new in town, you're all scared of me, but listen. Uh, some of you may call me Vengeance, some of you may call me The Knight, but I am Batman. Just before he escapes through the door, an armored black mask thug notices your presence and approaches your location. You can counter his attack, but this won't be able to take him out because he is wearing armor. Therefore, you must, must use a cape stun before finishing him off with a series of body strikes. Hmm. Must, huh? Sorry, now, that's what got you into this mess in the first place. now, not to be that guy. Granted, the entire point of the series is me being that guy. But, one, you can ultra stun this guy and do that and do a ground takedown. You can also, and in a second, he'll get up. Oh boy. Maybe I shouldn't have led that because it takes him a while. The point I'm trying to make here is you don't have to just do that and then beat him down. There are other options. For example, and then <laughs> you can do this, and then you can do a ground takedown. <laughs> you can also, and then run into him, which also brings him down, which is actually the speed run method. So the point is that when the guide says, I must do this, that is not accurate. Alrighty. First boss fight, what do you have for me, guide? Defeat the Beast. Killer Croc is the first of the assassin fights in Batman Arkham Origins. He's much stronger than the standard thugs you have faced so far, and you cannot counter his attacks. The Beast charges your way in a devastating offense. Either redirect him by evading over his mass, or hit him with a cape stun to stop him in his tracks. Get fucking wrecked. Be careful because Killer Croc immediately gets up and strikes the ground, knocking Batman off his feet. Quickly perform an evade move to avoid taking damage from this attack. At this point, Killer Croc goes to the explosive tanks and quickly opens up with a helicopter while a helicopter delivers two black mass thugs. Quick fire a series of batarangs at the big guy to make the container detonate, causing a serious causing serious damage to your nemesis? I know. I think Nemesis is far too strong of a word for Killer Croc, especially in this game. And quick firing the Batarang. Just come on. Either evade the big guy's charging attacks or hit him with a cape while you're taking down the thugs. Reptile goes for one more tank, destroys it. Okay. And that brings us to the end. So pretty much, 
Uh, focus the black mass thugs as they appear and just either evade or stun him until they're defeated. But for the most part, this is very straightforward. All right, take you guys out. Oh, fuck me. Oop, evading. Evading you good. And now uh, they're all gone. Let's go. Take you guys out first. I fucking did the same thing again. Okay. Okay. Keep the camera on him. Sir. Once they're... Alright, I took way too many hits for that. But, oh well. Before leaving, talk to Alfred to earn an easy 4,000 XP. Every time you visit the Batcave, speak with Alfred to earn extra experience. XP is only earned the first time you talk to him, however. Wait. Every time you visit the Batcave, speak with Alfred to earn extra experience. XP is only earned the first time you talk to him, however. Okay. So, we're going to talk to Alfred to earn experience. Every time we come to the back to the back game. But we only get experience the first time. Bet. I can do that. And ready to take you to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Plaza, sir. I'm waiting for the specific space. Talk to Alfred. A question, sir, if I may. How did Waylon Jones come to be the way he is? That's a great question. From the look of it. If you're 4, XP, Alfred Wisdom. I enjoyed getting that XP. I enjoy talking to you later to not get any XP. Alright. Let's talk about leveling up in this game. So what it says, defeating Killer Croc gives you enough XP to earn your first upgrade point. You can spend these points at the Wayne Tech screen to unlock upgrades and improve Batman's skill and equipment. There are three categories that can be improved, close combat upgrades, invisible predator upgrades, and auxiliary upgrades. Now, there is no specification anywhere in this guide prior to this point about what path you should take with the upgrades, recommended skill trees, nothing. And from personal experience, let me explain to you how this is going to go. The guide is not going to mention upgrades whatsoever as far as specifically what you should upgrade until at some very random point, it's suddenly going to be like, hey, if you don't already have this upgrade, you should really have X upgrade for this part. And either if I have a spare upgrade point and can get it immediately, or I have to go farm to get an upgrade point so that I can get it and follow the guide. So pretty much... We're just not going to upgrade until we reach that point where the guide is just like, hey, randomly, you should have this upgrade, which will eventually come. So I was wrong, very, very wrong about how upgrades were going to work in this. As it turns out, uh, this guide is really bad at advising on upgrades to the point where it only directly advised us to get one upgrade throughout the entire walkthrough of the story. Which, frankly, at that point, I would have rather it just not advise us on any of them, so at least I could have said I beat the game without doing any upgrades. Uh, to give an example of this, so this is the kind of intro of the guide where it goes over, like, basic tenets of the game, and it talks about ballistic armor. Uh, the next time, at no point in here does it recommend, say, uh, an upgrade path where it tells you when you should or get ballistic armor or if you should get it before combat armor, anything like that. And then the next time ballistic armor is brought up, throughout the entire guide and throughout the and this is before the story walkthrough begins the next time ballistic armor is brought up is at the firefly boss fight where it doesn't even tell you like to get it or that you should have it it just says or directly telling you hey if you haven't already you should have your fully upgraded ballistic armor it just is like yeah uh firefly will damage both your combat and ballistic armor so yeah i was very wrong about how upgrades were going to work in this guide i gave it too much credit it pretty much was almost an upgradeless run. GCR comms towers. The other six districts have comms towers that are currently experiencing interference from Enigma's jammers. As you travel to these locations, make sure you pa make your way past Enigma's defenses to reach his towers and hack his jammers. This makes fast travel around Gotham much easier. All right, so pretty much, as we come across the towers. We'll do them, but only like if if we go like actually through the location where they're at. We're not just actually going to hunt them down. Look for the crime in progress tracker to appear on the right side of the HUD. Use it to find the criminals around the city and stop them for extra XP. 
investigate, perhaps stop the crime. But I also need to get to the arms dealer. Just getting extra back. XP to not level up. Penguin's got snipers out. I'll have to take the snipers down silently to proceed. Grapple your way to the northeast and perch on the smokestack just southwest of the final offer to scout out the situation. Armed snipers stand guard on the crow's nest at the front of the ship and on a cargo container to the north. Several more armed guards roam around the deck in between, glide over to the nest, and silently take down the first sniper. Now technically, it needs to be this smokestack, correct? Yes. And then... Oh, come on now. Come on now. Do silent take down. And then behind you. I see tanks. The also, this feels like a good time to bring up the fact that at no point in the Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, or so far yet in this guide has it at once been brought up. How OP and broken using the back claw to instantly KO people off railings is? Not once has that been brought up in any one of these guides. Wait patiently for each thug to walk behind a cargo container. Okay. A cargo container. Behind one. Alright, so the only cargo container these guys seem capable of going behind is this. Can they? Can we, we would count this as behind the cargo. Can they get up here, though? Is there, like, a ladder? Yes. Okay. So, if we just make a big enough noise here. Come on. That'll bring someone. I mean, if we look at it from this way, he's behind a cargo container. Come on. Oh, hold on. Yep, over here. No, up up the stairs, please. You guys can get up. Oh, wait, you can't get up here. Oh, I thought they could get up here. Wait. Okay. So the only definition of reasonable definition of behind the cargo container where we can actually take these guys down is when they come across this bridge. Which we have our first victim. Okay, patiently. <laughs> Listen, from this way, if you look at it from this point of view, that's behind a cargo container. And then do that. Get them to come. What the even fuck? What the fuck are you two doing? Oh, hold on. What? I killed. I knocked that dude out like five minutes ago. What are you doing? What are you all doing? Oh, wait, that guy. Okay, that guy you might maybe just figuring out about. How are we supposed to fight? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Okay. We just gotta wait for you. We just gotta wait for you to go behind the cargo crate. the cargo container. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
I mean, kind of right, you know? You know, that's, that's yeah. Just, just maybe more directly, please. You're so close. No. 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 You fucked. Yes, yes it did. You should come this way. Well, not for down there. Come on. Yes, yes. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you can do it. Uh, too many places to cover. Oh, oh, no. no, no, no. Come on. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. We've committed too long. We we have to get him with the pile. He's coming in too high. Come on. Oh. Oh. Yep. Yes. Notice the pile. Go to the pile. Go to the pile. Go to the pile. Holy oh, no. fucking shit. <laughs> oh my god. Look. They're all, see, all behind the crate. See, they're all behind the storage container. All good. Not all of them, not quite all of them were quiet, but most of them were and are behind the cargo container. <laughs> Couldn't have said behind the tank? No. Like, there is literally nothing. What else could there be for, that qualifies as cargo container around here? Use Detective Vision to spot three hostiles around the corner, including one armed foe. Toss remote control battering and guide it into the armed enemy to knock him down, move in, and take all three down. Yeah. Oh, goddammit. Inverted. Yeah. Who thinks of breaking... no gonna Let's it. go. Oh, okay. And can you please go down? Am I gonna die? Maybe. Ooh, you might wish it. Open the door to the theater before a bigger thug knocks Batman back inside. Three normal enemies are here too. The big enemy is one of Penguin's enforcers. Redirect his attacks or perform a cape stun into a beatdown to take him out of the fight. Now what the guy doesn't bring up here is that it's an extremely good idea to just lay a bunch of explosive gel, like, right about here, so that when the guys come in, you can just blow it up on them. Well, the guy doesn't mention that, so, you know. We are also supposed to focus the Enforcer before taking out the other guys, so let's do that. Okay. Easy enough. Uh, you'd be surprised. Predator encounter. Threat medium. Six armed enemies. Grapple to the best vantage point as you enter the room. You can get a quick inverted takedown. If we grapple to the best vantage point, we can score an immediate inverted takedown. I'm assuming that's this. Okay. Well, I failed. Hold on. Let's go? Okay, we got it. <laughs> Only took us two restarts. Floor grates litter the room, along with weak walls that can be exploded next to a hostile. What's up, boys? Ah. Look, there's a bounty on the street, Ted. If we get him before he gets 
No, fuck. That worked out well. That worked out amazingly. Okay then. Batman interrupts the party and gets into a fight with four of the Penguin's men. The biggest threat is the thug with a knife, so be ready with a blade dodge. I love that they mentioned the blade guy, but not the dude with wielding a fucking hammer. And I just leveled up, so I'm thinking I'm level 6 now. Once they are taken care of, Batman interrogates the thug. Actually, he, he interrogates Penguin. For information on Black Mask, at this point another assassin shows up. Deathstroke. Okay, let's get into this. Counter Deathstroke's attacks, getting in your own strikes and backclaw slams when the opportunity arises. I just want to take a moment to really highlight how much the guide wants you to use backclaw slams in this fight to the point where it is that phrase comes up not once, not twice, not three times, but four times throughout the entirety of this of this one page about how to defeat Deathstroke, which is 4 out of 10, so is 40% of all references to Backclaw Slams in this entire guide, is all on this one page. Find Black Mask. I expect this will be the fight of your life. Enjoy your final... And Backclaw Slam. And Backclaw Slam. Okay, that's not a slam. And back off. Oh, okay. Okay, fine, fine. After tossing the assassin, quick fire the back claw to bring him towards you, then perform a back claw slam to damage Deathstroke. Oh, okay. I may have gone too hard on the back claw slams. Destro carries a cool new gadget called the Remote Claw. He jumps into the air and fires it into Batman's chest. The other end is attached to a red barrel that sits on the balcony. This device brings the two together with an explosive result. Press the counter button as it heads your way to catch it and throw it at the boss. If Destro pulls out his gun and starts firing, use the back claw quick fire to interrupt him, giving you a chance to close in and possibly get in a back claw slam. If you are too far away to use this gadget, throw down a smoke pellet to mass your movements. Usually if I'm too far away, I just started dodge rolling. No mention of using combat takedowns, by the way. Lots of mention of backclaw slams, though. Will I now? Okay. And spam as much as possible. And, oh, here we go. Am I now? Oh, wow. Honestly didn't realize the range this thing had. When am I ever going to need the fucking drop a smoke bomb if it has that range? The tactics are the same to defeat Deathstroke when his sword is out, counter the strikes, and get in back plus slams whenever possible. So, essentially, uh, counter every time he attacks you, and spam the back claw as much as possible, which is not terrible advice. And also use a smoke pellet if you're out of range with the back claw when he goes to shoot you. Okay, that one's a bit weird, I'm not gonna lie. Back claw slam! Back claw slam! Okay, that was a slam, but whatever. I might be getting a little low, but we're fine. We're doing fine, though. Let's focus here. 
Or I'd end up dying. And back on slam? Nope. Okay. And back on slam? Let's go. You ain't shit. I think this is this it? Let's go. Look, it's a little dicey, but we managed to figure it out it's in the over, end. Slade. Oh, I just leveled up again. Hold on. What am I Seven. Okay. Seven and no explicit recommendation on what I should or shouldn't upgrade. Grab the concussion detonator off the table, then head back upstairs. Talk to Alfred for easy XP. I'm under the impression that we don't get any more XP from Alfred, though. Concussion detonator, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, it's shit, and if at any point the guide actually explicitly recommends I use this thing, I'm going to be really annoyed. Well played, sir, you Yep. Wait. So what the fuck was it telling me? Okay. So when it told me I only get XP the first time, it just blatantly lied to me. <laughs> this kind of does make up for that, though, because it also told me to keep talking to him, even though he only gave me XP the first time. But the fact that he actually gives me XP every time kind of makes that more make more sense. Grapple up to one of the vantage points that surrounds the center tower of the GCPD and move around to the backside. Several armed guards patrol the rooftop, including two snipers on the platform below. Quietly drop behind him, perform a silent takedown, and return to your perch. Understood. Thanks. Oh, hello. Then... Over to the right, a lone officer walks the helipad, taken down silently. Only the two men who guard the door remain. Use your remote claw to knock them both out, and then hit them with ground takedowns. Okay, I think you're about to head back over to him, though, so that won't be a problem. Okay, that worked out. Incredibly well. Oh no. Aim at one. Aim at one of the cops and throw a concussion detonator. This gives you time to swoop down and get into some free strikes before they re revive. All right. Alright. Oh, god damn it. Focus the armored guy. Would have thought you would have gone after the guy with a gun. But yeah. Alright, hopefully that's the last time the guy ever tells us to use that thing again. Does the guy make any mention of the foreshadowing? Did I miss that? Random users use the disruptor. Yeah, so no mention of the foreshadowing you were about to see here. Foreshadowing. Select the disruptor and step out from behind cover. Disable both firearms with the dart device and then proceed to beat the entire group down. I'm fairly certain you can only disable one of them. We'll get to that in a second. Alright, so we have 
nine. No, sorry. We have two things here. But I think because there's no combat between here and the shooting range, we only have one when we get down there. Penguin's man said the disruptor can be used to jam the Yeah, so it only has one because there's been no combat between. So yeah, we can't do both. Huh. Oh, okay. But thankfully, you don't have the bloated, so it's all good. Enter the elevator as it opens to the right. This takes you back up to the rooftop maintenance, where you run in to the captain. Just the captain. Exit to the GCPD roof and perform a double takedown on the unsuspecting guards ahead. Now, I could just let you guys go, but... Hi, Barbara. Hello, it... Oh. Again, I did that. Oh, boy. He's fine. Oh, hello. Man. Ooh, I'm down there. All right. The elevator comes to a stop. Step through the hole in the wall to find another group of black mass men. This time you can see an enforcer, two martial artists, and a couple of thugs. Knock out the armed enemy when you hear him fire his gun. So wait until he starts actively firing his gun. What up? All right, you're loading it. There we go. Then, to simplify the fight, use the special combo takedowns on the martial artist once they become available. Already. Now, it, it said to use... All right. The takedowns on the martial artist. I'm under the impression... Yeah, they just do that. Like, am I crazy? Yeah, they're immune to that shit. Immediately grapple up to one of the vantage points as the Joker's men now occupy the room. One of them carries a portable jamming device, so your detective vision is scrambled at the moment. This enemy should be your first target so that you can survey the situation. You can also use the disruptor to disable the device. Right, immediately grapple up. Something's jamming my signal. I need to figure out what yep. it is and take it out. Use different sections of the bank to isolate the foes, then take them out. They take them down from the floor grates and vents. Or through the windows and structurally weak walls. Or nice. Knows I survived it. Get closer, please. Let's go. <laughs> Before leaving the bank, run over to the vault and find the bank manager's body. Use the evidence scanner to scan it. It shows that she died from po a poison. With added guilt, exit the bank through the front door. So, hold on. Because we need more guilt. was a side effect of a poison she wasn't laughing she was dying if i had known she was poisoned i might have been able to save her all right now we feel extra guilty uh there is no mention of the crying baby that you will also hear when you exit or the which is to start the shiva side mission just doesn't mention that All right, no mention of the baby. All right, six hostiles, including an armored foe hanging out just ahead. Hop into the floor grate to the left and approach the thugs before taking them on. Use the disruptor to disable the one firearm in the group. So hold on. Great. Can we use the disruptor in the grate? Can we use the remote claw in the grate? 
hell Rocco and the guys are still doing down there? It's after midnight. They're changing the security code. Hop into the floor right to the left and approach the thugs. That's what I heard. <laughs> Sounds like we'll be here it, it literally tells us to hop into the grate and then proceeds to say, do a bunch of things. Hey, it literally says, so the guide literally says, hop into the grate and then maybe do one of these two actions that you can't do in the grate. It's like you came back from the dead. See, that's the problem with the new boss. All these theatrics. Old hmm. Roman wanted Batman dead. It'd be a shot to the head and one in the chest for good measure. No, not you. Hold on. Let's do it my way. There we go. Close enough. Follow the path onto the raptors above five enemies. Use the disruptor to disable the two firearms and then drop on the armored guy. Oh, no, we gotta do it so yeah. Hold on. Boom. So of course our disruptor hasn't had time to recharge uh, since it told us to use the disruptor down there. But uh we'll just give it a second. Ooh, can I get that? Oh I wait. Yeah we can. Yeah, this guy doesn't seem to account for the recharge time on the disruptor, like at all. Are you shitting me? Hold on. Hold on. We can salvage this. <laughs> we can salvage this. Just, need the Just don't start throwing grenades, please. Okay. Boom. Okay. Oh. Alright, hold on. I need you. Sir, if you could move, please. No. Wait, what, what the fuck is going on here? Okay, hold on. Can we not? Okay, we're just going to restart here. <laughs> Because that was a that was a nightmare, that was a complete unmitigated disaster. Okay, and now that we don't have to wait for the disruptor, Too quiet, man. Something ain't right. Please scare them off, man. Let me finish up, and we can be out of here. Wait, we are supposed to drop attack. Um. So what do we do now, wise guy? Just wait. That's your brilliant strategy. Like, if you could move into a way, like, it can drop on you. So what do we do now, wise guy? Just wait. All right. That's your brilliant strategy. Just wait. No, just wait. I'm thinking. All right, thank you. I've aggroed you. Which should enable me to get. <laughs> wait, hold on. I see you over there. No, I need. Huh. You get down from there. Well, I'm gonna crack your skull. Well, close enough. You your side over there. And then make sure. All right, so now we just gotta wait for the disruptor <laughs> to recharge again. There we go. And we can get this. Because I didn't get it because I restarted. Scrimmish attacks the attention of the enforcer as he brings some of his friends to the warehouse. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want him dead. You understand me? Deader, deader than, than dead. dead. If he gets past us and any of you that survive, we'll wish you were deader than dead too. Mm -hmm. That's low-key one of my favorite lines of this whole fucking franchise. <laughs> Oh, we leveled up again. What are we, like, 12 now? Oh, 11. Don't give him an edge. A portable jammer keeps you from g getting a complete picture at the moment. Use the vantage points to move to the other end of the room and spot the foe who's interfering with your equipment. Hit him with a disruptor or drop down and eliminate him for good with a silent takedown. There are a few explosive canisters around the room that you can attach to one of the foes with a remote claw, resulting in an easy takedown. They give us that crazy look, huh? And silent takedown. Oh, 
Are you goddamn it? Okay. There we go. That's one. We're doing fine. That's some disappearance, something ain't right. Wake up. Oh, what the hell? Okay, if you could not teleport, I'd appreciate it. Yo, Cupcake, you ain't done yet, are you? Things fine now, but it won't be pretty in the morning. Time to show the boss for the wheel. Come on. A little bit forward. A little bit forward. Uh, now we get to feel extra guilt here. You let me die. How many more must perish before you realize? You, savior, you're a curse upon this city, a plague on all of Gotham. Leave us alone. We were better off without you. I'd still be alive. The ninja drops in alongside several illusionary duplicates. Counter and strike these hallucinations as well as Copperhead herself. The fake one just evaporates. The fake ones just evaporate, but hitting the real boss knocks her back and causes damage. If a ninja evades your attack and causes you to whiff, continue on to another foe since this action does not break your combo. And no combo takedowns, because she's a woman. Do they... So the guy did say only men for the combo takedowns, but does that count if they're illusions? Use explosive gel and concussion grenades, oh god. Against the ninja, the blast helps you distinguish the real copperhead from the others. Keep beating the ninjas down until the airdrop arrives with the endo. Without the effects of the poison, Batman is ready to finish the, assist the assassin for good. And then... Which one is... is... Hold on, I gotta figure out which one... <laughs> I so never fucking use it. It's oh my god. That seemed pretty fucking useless. Another taste? <laughs> I'm over here, Batman. Come on. Let's go. Okay, that's really not that effective. Late in the fight, Copperhead st starts using a dash attack. Watch for a flash to telegraph his arrival and evade out of its way to avoid taking damage. The explosive gel at least will do, like, those in the vicinity, where the connection detonator seems to only do, like, one. Like, will it hit the second one? Oh, or... No. Okay. Ooh. So it should have just told me to use just the explosive gel. Oh, and now we're done. Oh, good, nice. I mean, you know what? That's pretty close. So we'll do this one, too. Jesus Christ, this is pretty convoluted. Since we're in the location of this one, and it's actually on our path. Um... So it would appear... So when it it would appear that when the guide told us to just do these towers when we uh, run by them and are in the location, it failed to mention that like, hey, you need certain items that don't unlock till way later in the game to do them. Or at least I believe so. Like, okay, hold on. Do we? Because yeah, the disruptor will stop me from deactivating it, right? That's I believe how this works. Yeah, which we can't do. 
until we get the shock gloves. All right. And concussion detonator, because you demand we use that for some reason. Oh, look. He's mildly dazed for like five seconds. I will note that in some of the pictures, Batman very clearly does have his ballista and combat armor fully upgraded. And I could use that as justification, but I'm kind of waiting for the guy to actually fucking directly tell me what to upgrade. Oh. <laughs> Rug. Eight armed men prevent any opportunity for predatory tactics. Grapple up one of the vantage points and survey the room. There, are, there is no jammer device to take care of this time, but there are mines stewing around along with men carrying them. With the correct upgrade, hold up, you can disable mines with a disruptor. That is, hold on. So that is the first direct reference to getting an upgrade that this guy has offered us. All right, don't have access to this upgrade. What upgrades do we need to get it? PA disruption algorithm, all right. Boom. It's the minimum number to get it. Perfect. We still have 12. All right, and then the rest was just use the remote claw to attach explosives. All right, that's one. Bane is extremely big and strong, with Venom pumping through his body. He has a regular strike that can be countered, and you're able to hit him with, without stunning him. When you get an opening, perform a cape stun into a beatdown to knock his health down. Be ready to counter, though, as he can strike at you during this move. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, oh, I evade. present to you the death of the Batman. Now, let us see. We're supposed to wait until he's super bane. Oh. Normal combo. Let's go. After taking a little abuse, Ven uh, Bane removes his jacket and increases his venom intake. This makes him bigger, tougher, and stronger. His health to open Bane up for an attack, you must perform an ultra stun by hitting him with three successive cape stuns. And then once you hit the necessary multiplier, throw in a special combo takedown to damage his venom pack and return him to a normal state. Now we got an ultra stun. Let's go. And boop. Now we can attack him normally. Eventually, Bane grabs Batman, and tosses him out of the window to the balcony below. Another combo takedown. And now we go to the cutscene. Nope. Now we go to the cutscene. Right, block this. He increases the venom, then stomps the ground and charges at Batman. Evade this move as it cannot be countered. Be ready to do this twice. He follows us up with a ground pound move. We want Batman to be in the air when he makes content, so time the dawn as he swings. Okay, now once again, very similar to Asylum, it's kind of better to just, like, actually run from that, as opposed to actually full-on dodging. And do the initial takedown. On him. And then after that... Use. Once the shock gloves are charged, activate them so you so that your combo multiplier increases faster. Once it is available, perform a special combo takedown against Bane to damage his pack further. Okay. When I'm done with him. 
use his men to build it up along with the shot gloves. What do I mean like that? It's kind of better to run and not actually like dodge and evade. But the guy does want us to evade. And then time that. I don't think I have the No, we got it back down. Build it up off you guys. While all of this is happening, not after, the Joker is sent to Blackgate Prison, where a psychology intern checks him in. As he discusses what he is feeling, you must fight off a room of thugs. Once you've taken care of him, follow the straightward path to avoid the gas fire. To avoid the gas fire. We'll get to that when we get to that. One more. All right, now, quickly something to point out here. So the guy said we are to avoid the uh, gas fire here. Um, it doesn't damage you, so there's really no reason to avoid it. Like, this doesn't damage you. There's no reason to evade it. You can walk right through it. We'll wait for it to do it, yeah. Nothing. Don't need to evade you. Uh, you can regain control of Batman, grab the blue grenade, talk to Alfred for extra XP, okay. And then use the Batwing. Talk to Alfred for more XP, because we need it. I need to find Bane. Is the tracker responding? Not at present, I'm afraid. Let me know if anything changes. Anything. You just give me 14k? It's fucking ridiculous. Okay, can you all fuck off here? And of course more of you are coming. God damn it. That got out of hand real fast. <laughs> and the uh, the no armor is starting to become a problem this late in the game. Let's get this trash. Um I don't think I'm supposed to be able to get this close. What's going on here? There's absolutely supposed to be a cutscene at this point. Alright, well, we'll just manage. Oh, are you shitting me? Now you're doing it? Now you're doing it? This game sometimes. Gordon would never order a Well, this is awkward. Have to stop him before he sends his men into a trap. <laughs> the jammer enemy tends to initially patrol the lower level. Therefore, if you want to get rid of him first. You must either get his attention with a distraction or go in after him. Pick off each enemy with a silent takedown, an inverted takedown, or any of the numerous finishing moves at your disposal. Right. 
You know, I don't think the guide at any point mentioned the mines and the gargoyles in this area. This feels like a good time to bring up how the guide over as we've started getting into the later half has really stopped giving explicit instructions for the predator like areas the and really just been like after like mentioned. it's pretty much just been here's how you start it off after that just figure it out you should know by now which isn't necessarily incorrect but like you expect more from like an official physical strategy guide hop into the floor grate and follow it to the middle of the room you can select almost any enemy in the ground to eliminate first, so pick the one who gives you the most trouble, such as the stun baton, armored, or shielded enemies. And then once the room is here, okay. No other direction. Let's fucking go. Guide made no mention of the fact that the edges are like electrocuted and you can potentially use that to damage people. Like, say, am I doing this? Yeah, no mention of that by the guide. All right, let's not get around before I die here. No armor life. Firefly boss fight. Firefly's head let you know that he's readying his flamethrower. As the fire flows Batman's way, dodge to the side. Quick fire batarangs whenever you get the chance to disrupt the assassin. The attack knocks Batman down, damaging both his combat and ballistic armor. I'm fairly certain this is the first time in the story walkthrough part of this guide where it has ever specifically called out and or mentioned combat or ballistic armor. The villain's weapons misfires regularly, giving you a chance to hit him with an attack. Find him with a glue with a quick fired glue grenade. It takes Firefly some time to free himself, so rapidly toss batarangs to knock his health down a tad. I'd like to point out the guide has not in this boss fight, or at any point since the story began, mentioned the uh multi-fire batarangs. Or the multi-target batarangs which would be very nice to have right now. But no, we'll just be firing normal batterings. Continue hitting Firefly with the glue grenade and batterings until you knock until you, do you knock him out. Take advantage of this state by quick firing the back claw at the boss. I didn't notice his gun jamming at any point. <laughs> come on. Come on. Let's go. Alright, first time I'm getting hit. God damn. Okay. We're doing fine. When you reach the street, evade backwards as he sprays a line of fire from the right to the left. Okay. And then we come out here. Dodge backwards. Yep. And then the most unnecessary yet. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, we know. Most unnecessary instructions ever. Now Firefly launches three grenades at once. Avoid the blast by quickly running to the other side of the area or using the evade roll if the grenades are close. There's a kind of weird implication with that me how I'm reading this that it seems that we're only supposed to wants us firing the glue grenade following his gun jamming which to be fair when if you fire the glue grenade while he's attacking it does destroy the glue grenade so there's kind of a mild point to that but most of the time you can just spam the glue grenade and get lucky Oh wait hold on there we go That is a very subtle animation.
It's literally like just when the black smoke puffs out a little bit. It's like pretty much the only direct acknowledgement of that being. Oh, hello. Oh, that, that's the whole fight. I do believe, no, he, well, there's one little section where he just starts throwing a bunch of shit up before, but I believe I have enough health to get away with that. Yeah, this is the part where he just starts throwing everything. Holy shit, that's done. Okay. Ten hostiles have taken a few prisoners' employees hostage. You start in a ventilation area that connects to the lower floor through the right HVAC shaft and to an upper area from the left. This is a great location to escape to if you are discovered. There are many ways that you can clear out the room, but... This is a good option to start the encounter. Crawl into the right shaft and pull off the cover straight ahead, sneak up behind the nearby convict, and then knock him out with a silent takedown. Move down to a second thug who has his back turned slightly ahead and eliminate him in the same manner, setting up for a quick exit to one of the central vantage points. As you do so, prisoners converge on your first victim, so a hasty exit is necessary. Work your way around the four central perches so that you can drop behind the sniper who stands guard atop the middle room. With this guy out of the way, move to the outside vantage points and survey the situation. Watch out for the two guys with the thermal goggles and make sure that you don't get stuck on a spot that you can scan. And then it just says once you've secured the room, talk to Harley Quinn. So, its directions are this room. We pry this. We don't do a takedown. Then, we're supposed to do a silent takedown on you. And we come around here to the middle. Take out the sniper. And then after that, it gives absolutely no directions. This might watch out for the guys with the goggles. 20 hostiles hang out in the northern section of cell block B. Two carry shields, four have found melee weapons, two are trained martial artists, and one enforcer plows through the group. Start the fight by attaching the fire extinguisher to one of the tougher prisoners to create a smoke screen. Be sure to keep your camera moving as projectiles are constantly tossed into the mix as you concentrate on the fight. Remote claw back. We have the fire hydrant. I want that on a tougher opponent. Uh, I guess the shield guy? Okay, hold on. Yeah, this is it's not at all convenient to do that. Like, I cannot stress how, like, not convenient trying to do that is. If you, like, actually want to hit one of the tougher fucking enemies. Alright, the Bane boss fight. Let's read up on that real quick. Bane starts the fight with the same moves that he presented before. Evade his three charge attacks. Then, as he performs a ground pound, and evade towards him so that you are off the floor when he makes contact. Hit Bane with the Ultra Stun. By performing three consecutive, three quick cape stuns against the hopped up villain, quickly follow this up with a beatdown and finish it off with a takedown, bringing him back to normal. By putting out one of his venom hoses, quickly get away as he stops the ground and repeats his attacks. 
Evade. Evade. Oh, god damn it. Okay. And evade into you. Boom. 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 Four prisoners are tossed into the ring. Bounce between them to build up your combo multiplayer and then use a special combo takedown against the big guy to knock him down a peg. As you fight the hostiles, be sure to keep sight of the charging Bane by spinning the camera around. One tactic to keep him away for a short time is to quick fire a glue grenade. This quickly keeps him busy as you obtain the necessary multiplier. Alright. A fade again. Wait for you to chill out. God damn it. And then, all right, wait for them to get up. Nope. Boom. And then use you guys to build up a combo. Wait. All right, now we're in the second part. Second phase of the fight. Several thugs drop in, including a shock baton wielding foe and an armored enemy. This really complicates things since you must avoid Bane's charges while fending off a variety of attacks. Stay alert as enemies come after Batman from all angles. Fortunately, Bane's vicious moves knock down anyone in his way. If you are having trouble building up a combo multiplier, take advantage of the time when the thugs are on the ground to hit the main villain with a ultra stun beatdown and takedown. Oh, hello. Okay, so wait for everyone to get up. Come over here. Ooh, that guy is and boom. Oh, we're fine. You know, Jim, okay. No. Boom, boom, boom. Let me tell you how excited I am to do this with no health upgrades. Nope. Batman and Bane both fall into the maximum security ward on a lower level. The assassin is now too strong to fight directly, so Batman must use predatory skills instead. Alfred reveals that Bane must be taken out within 10 minutes or he will take out Batman in one fit hit. Once you have control, sneak up behind the boss and perform a silent takedown to get things started. Let's go. Ooh, okay. This ticks Bane off as red warnings signify that he is preparing to charge away. Drop a smoke pellet and escape around the corner. Wait for him to come back or hop into a floor grate and perform a takedown when given the opportunity. And then smoke pellet. We wait around the corner. The guy made no mention of the glue grenade here for this portion of the fight. Uh huh. And prep for the wall takedown. Hopefully, we get it this time. Yeah, we. No? Okay. I was literally spamming that button. Ideally, you want to perform a silent takedown near the metal rods. If you're on his back, at one of those locations before we wall take time to throw him into the electricity. Bane does not take kindly to this, so move into a ventilation shaft or floor grate, grabbing or hitting him any chance you get. Take advantage of the fire extinguishers that lie around or throw down a smoke pallet to create a smoke screen. And then... As a distraction. While we get into the grates. Continue hitting Bane with various takedowns. Aiming for the electrical, the electric current whenever possible. When Bane's health is nearly depleted, Batman lets his guard down and is thrown through the wall into a control room. Okay. Roar. 
in that game. That, that was close enough to confuse you. Oh, okay. Oh, they just auto open now. Oh, interesting. They didn't even want to. Okay. Oh, 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 hold, 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 hold. Keep going this way, yeah, yeah. Oh, do we have one to the rag? Yes. Oh, right, now he's bad. Oh, wait, we just had this option for silent takedown there. Come here. Come back here. Can we, we have not gotten like one actual wall to take down. It confuses it. <laughs> oh no, okay, never mind. It didn't confuse it that much. Alright, can we finally get a fucking wall takedown? Alright, no. By the way, the fact that he learns from his fucking attack and, like, adapts is not at any point mentioned in the guide. How do we have a- thank you! Finally. Fucking finally. Is that it? Oh yeah, that's it. Very much lacking in information. Didn't mention he adapted. Didn't mention he started checking vents. Didn't mention glue grenades. Ah, you know, I've been better. Crawl through the ventilation system to reach death row. Climb down to the first floor to find Warden Joseph, who warns you about a sniper at the other end of the room. Just then, Captain Gordon shows up and takes the guy out, allowing a slew of it, although a slew of enemies arrive in the meantime. No crocodile-like man you want to mention here? Okay. Where's Gordon? Sniper! Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you weren't mentioned. Joker grabs a couple shards from the broken stained glass window, swinging at the hero. Quickly counter his two attacks and followed up with four beatdowns one after the other. The satisfying pummeling of your arch rival begin bring oh, that's right. This satisfying pummeling of your arch rival brings the story mode to a close. We both exist because of them. Give up. Satisfying pummeling incoming. You are now free to complete any unfinished side missions. Alright, Wonder Tower. Hello again. Defeat Shiva. After a short talk with her, four ninjas attack, counter this move, and then start thrashing the five women. Once you have dealt enough damage, the ninjas are replaced by martial artists. It takes many counters to finish off this group. Always be alert for incoming attacks, and if you find yourself in trouble, evade out of the group. Don't you ladies worry, I won't be using a combo takedown on you. I will just be thrashing you <laughs> with beatdowns. <laughs> Oh, she was immune to meet that. Okay. You okay? Can you? Okay. 
Can you goddamn get knocked out? All right. Well fought. Now let's see how you handle this. All right. Now you guys, I can technically use combo takedowns on, but I believe you we established earlier you are immune to it. Right? Yeah. Let's test your technique. A lesson for you. Nope. You done? Sure. You cannot hope to. Let's test. Okay, and now you guys are all done. Shiva, you ain't. I well, the assassin decides the fight is over and escapes. I don't need armor, nor do I need combo takedowns to beat your ass. The test is ended, and with it, your life. Enough. Now we'll see if skilled, honorable, devoted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see now why the master has chosen you. It seems we have both learned something today. I don't care about you or your master. I'm bringing you in. No, you're not. But you have earned... <sighs> Deadshot. Bring me the bat. Deadshot patrols the upper walkways with his wrist-mounted gun. He is extremely accurate and can ricochet his rounds off multiple walls. When he is aiming his weapon, a red laser shows you the path his bullet will take. The assassin is armored and therefore immune to silent takedowns. Quickly hit him with a knockout smash, or he will just break free. And just like perform an initial takedown on him. Excuse me. Is he there? This makes a loud takedown, so be ready to make a hasty escape. Use the same takedowns you have employed in other in other predator encounters. Spray explosive gel on the deductible walls, toss the sonic battering nearby, and once you get the message there is a hostile within range, detonate it. Use the vantage points, vents, and grates to hide from and take down the thugs. You can attach fire extinguishers to a hostile with a remote claw to knock him down. Be careful. We mentioned the this, so let's... Damn it, Deadshot. Deadshot honestly randomly deciding I'm going to start running is way more annoying than his men. Also, the fact that he will just fully start breaking on the sprint, not mentioned by the guy. Once the boss has taken enough damage, he hops down to the ground floor and more hostiles join the fight. Knock him down again and another group of enemies enters through the front door. And now you should have reinforcements him coming in. Yep, with a disruptor. Once his health is down to about 25%, the, assassins grab the, the assassin grabs the hostage, holding him in front. Without being seen, you must again work your way behind the guy and perform a silent takedown. This knocks Deadshot out for good. One more silent takedown on him. What? What? Bullseye. You were seen by... Okay. Alright. Aw, oh, shit. Here we go again. Alright. So hit him once, and then we eliminate all of his people before we attack him again. And then use some of the strategies involved. Set this up.
gotta eliminate both of his other guys, which is... One's right here. Are you shooting me? Oh, hold on. Can you get a double take down here? Yes, we can. Alright, now we hit him again, bringing in more enemies. We need more of a dip than that. Sorry me blowing up the wall wasn't a big enough distraction for you fuckers. Doing fine. Doing fine. Use a sonic battering to distract him. That was supposed to distract that shot, not fucking make you run all the way over there. Alright. Now we knock you down a peg. Let's go. Immediately dip out. Get into the offices. You and me. You and me, Deadshot. All you guys are gone. Don't do this. I got three kids. Please, I wanna live. Let's go. Alright, are you and using sonic battering, the explosive gel, and the fire hydrant. Remote Claw, which is all the little things suggested in the guide. There are other side quests, but those are kind of the only ones that, like, really interest me. Uh, final notes. This is probably, oh, you know, I don't want to say, with the exception of the Hogwarts Legacy Guide, the worst guide I've done, but, like, there was just nothing like really really great in this guide there were a couple of just wrong things you know it's like there wasn't like anything like really terrible advice that it gave but it just gave so little advice that it couldn't really have an opportunity to be terrible the fact that it literally the only specific upgrade it ever mentioned throughout the entire game like directly telling me to get was the disruptor upgrade to detonate mines is kind of ridiculous you know, obviously, I've mentioned a couple times about, like, oh, technically, like, it was, like, oh, you choose whatever you want to upgrade, or, and, like, there were some pictures, and the guy where it's, like, you could clearly see there was armor, but it's, like, this is a guide that, like, you know, people, like, in the 2010s were expected to pay money for. It's, like, I think I can expect you to outright tell me, hey, it's a good idea to have this upgrade at this point in the game, and say, if you haven't gotten this upgrade yet, purchase it. And so, yeah, the fact that it just didn't do that the entire time. It's definitely the worst of the Arkham guides. Arkham City guide literally didn't have us get the grapnel accelerator until like after the main story. And like arguably that guide is undeniably better. <laughs> and I feel that says everything you need to know about this guide.